We get the card down, set this air in the flame down, begin the full end down at the top of the oven. We're in the middle of a discussion regarding the opinion of Rebbe, which we had a contradiction in the understanding of the ration to the Sefer, and it's related to Allah, the Mishnah. Someone put Hinich Eruva Begilan, someone puts his air on the tree. So Rebbe said in the Brisa that if you put it above ten Tvachim on the tree, it's not going to be valid. Somehow, if you put it in a basket, it is going to be valid. We have two approaches in the Gemara. The Gemara continues discussing one of those two approaches. She is co-sponsored because of the Cheska to any time that I appreciate everyone joining us for today's da'af. Some of these are going to be discussing in today's da'af are regarding the next halach of the Mishnah, which is regarding Hinech Yeruv Bebar. If you put the Erev in the bar, what's the halach of it's in the Rishos HaYachet, meaning the area around that, is that a private domain, Rishos Ram, and if it's in the Karmas. What's the halach if you put the Erev on top of a reed, if it's attached to the ground, versus or if it's detached from the ground, and then it was stuck back into the ground, and if it's hard, or if those reeds that you put on top of are soft. Then we discuss the next mission regarding the air of in the closet, and the key is lost, what would the halacha be regarding the halacha of huve ruve b'mokam echad? Some of the key terms and concepts are regarding rishus ha-yachad, oi la'ad rikia. The rishus ha-yachad is the airspace above going all the way up to Shemaim, and also below, which obviously relates to the halacha of the hinech b'bar, is also considered as a rishus ha-yachad. Kalaha karen is the halacha that grains or vegetables are forbidden to be planted in a vineyard. However, it is mutter, that's just going to come up in the commercial discussion, to plant trees in the vineyard. The only problem is to plant other vegetables over there. Hakav is the isser of grafting two types of trees together or other things together with trees, and that's something that's forbidden to be done. So we begin the current daf, and actually, uh, actually, till basically the bottom of the Amid is continuation from the previous daf, so this is, this is from later. The Gemara is in the middle of discussing, finishing off essentially the discussion. As we said, we had we wanted to know what's the halacha, why this lamalam yud on the tree, which we said is Rosh Hashanah It's going to be forbidden. You can't make an air if your air is on top of the tree. That's Rosh Hashanah You're in Rosh Hashanah Rambam, being Kori Shalilam. Why does it make it any better if there's a basket? So we had two approaches. One was that yeah, the case of the basket was interesting. Is that the tree was not really for tefachim wide. The basket was uh, combining with that. You say chikkin lahashlim. And it's al Mokam Abba, so it's not really Rishus Yachin. That was one approach. Second approach to Gemara gave, which is the one we're in the middle of discussing, is Rabbi Yirmiya. He says that actually, no, because since Hod Yachin and Taisi, you could bend it down, pull it down. So technically, it's really within ten Tvachim, so it's really in Rishus Rabb, just like you are. Now, the Gemara already asked one question regarding, in general, the laws of Erevin that Hod Yachin and Taisi, so you say Hod Yachin and Tuye. Why do you have to ever put down Erev Tchumen? I could technically bring it over there. Again, Rashi said in general, Taisi says no specifically that of Yamtin. But be that as it may, the Gemara said, you're right, technically you should be able to say that, but with Glazer, if, when Yom Tov comes after Shabbos, then you can't have brought it there because it's Shabbos. Now the Gemara continues asking, it says, Ace for the Gemara, now you remember from the following Bryce. The Bryce is a little bit complex, and it's just to get to the point of the question, but the Gemara is like this. The Skavanish Bishos someone intended to have his Shrisa, his place of residence for Shabbos in Bishos Rabb, and they put his Arab on a wall near the place where he's having his shlisa, but it's beyond Dalad Amas. Similar like we explained the halacha of the tree. We said by the case of the tree, really, you have, it can't, it can't be within Dalad Amas, because even, well, even if it's above 10th Falcham, we said it's going to be a valid air, because it said, I'm listening to say, Ruva, Yishle Abba Amas. Remember, you have a virtual area around you of Dalad Amas, with the air. So whenever we're saying this halacha of Lamal Amiyud, although generally you think if you would be learning Mishnahis, you'd think, oh, Lamal Amiyud, for Shosyoch, for Shosyoch, the way Rabbi says, actually not true. You have a, a virtual area of a perimeter of Dalad Amas and you're in like that Rosh Hashayach. So we're talking about, when we're talking about these cases, let's say you're putting on the wall, it's beyond Dalad Amas from where you want to be. So it says the Mishnah, it says the Bryce like this. Lamat Masar Tzvachim, if it's beneath Ten Tzvachim, it will be Eru. It's going to be a valid Eru. Now, although your Eru is beyond Dalad Amas, you can still take it and you can bring it by going less than Dalad Amas as, at a time. Because although on Shabbos you're not letting me carry less than dollars at a time, but that's only rabbinically forbidden. Because biblically it's only when you go dollar at the same time. Here, since it's Ben Hashmashes, so they weren't geyser and this is Rabbanah, but Ben Hashmashes, so therefore it's going to be valid even if it's beyond dollar Amas, as long as it's below 10 Tvachim from the ground. Now, let's say Lamal Amir Tvachim, let's say it's above 10 Tvachim, then any Ruby it's not going to be valid air. Because if you're going to go ahead and have to go beyond dollar Amas, He's in Rishos Sarabim, and he cannot take it from Rishos Yachim because that's what's called Hu Rishos Sarabim be Ruben Rishos Yachim, and he cannot say, "Oh, Kaman Demali Dami." It's like as if it's all filled up because it's beyond Dalaramis. The whole idea of Kaman Demali is you get a perimeter of Dalaramis. 
Beyond all Ramas and Tvayim and Ten Tvachim, so it's Rishus Hayachid, it's in a different Rishus, you can't access it, so therefore it's not going to be valid. Now, here we're going to see the inverse of the Halacha. There's two interpretations of Rashi, we're saying the second one, which is later down on the Yom. The, the, the Bryce says now, Let's say you intended to have Heshvis on the top of a dove cap. Or on the top of a closet, which uh, Rashi in the second interpretation says, this is going on the first case, when you put your Erev on the wall. And now the halacha, for some reason, is going to be the exact opposite, which is actually a very simple halacha, but it's going to be the exact opposite. The first case, where you niskav and lishbeis be kara, you were intending to be on the bottom in the street, and now you put it on the wall. So then we said, with if below ten tvachim, it's okay because you're both in rishas ram. Above ten tvachim, it's not okay, and it's beyond al ramis. It's up there to rishas yachid, you rishas ram. Here, exactly the opposite. Here, you actually there's a big closet, a big a dove cot, which is where the doves are. You, you actually your shlisa, you're intending to be on top of the closet. That's where you wanted to make your shlisa. Here is the exact opposite. If you put the air on the wall, above ten tefachim, then it will be air. Now it's going to be a valid air. Why? Because the tower is near the wall. And then you could bring it, and nothing is in between the two of them. So you're right there in the same area. But if it's beneath ten tefachim, let's say, as Rashi explains, in the ninth tefach, where the halach is, if Rabbi Makasmalov, if the, if the general public uses it to, to uh, fix their, their, their children, their burdens, that's considered as Rosh Hashanah Oh, that ain't a Ruba Eir. Then it's not going to be an Eir because he cannot bring it from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah That's what the Brysa says. Okay? Now, but then the Gemara asked the following question, which is why we're bringing the Brysa. Vamai, why is this Talacha? Hachi nami nami hero, so you should say Rabbi Yirmiya's principle, Hail Vayachal in Taisai. Since you could bend the tower where he's making his Shvisa, Ulavir, and to bring it, Lataycha Sara, Within a tenth vachim from the ground into Rosh Hashanah, it should be that the top of the migdal of the ta- of the closet should be a karmelis because it's four vachim wide, but it's not ten vachim high because you technically yochlin teish you could bend the closet and bring it within the airspace of where you're putting the air in the wall, which is within ten vachim. And even if it's a karmelis, you could bring from a karmelis to Rosh Hashanah by banish mashes. So why you tell me that if you're making your air on the top of the migdal, on top of the closet, on top of the dovecot. We are yet Rosh Hashanah and the Arab was on the wall with him, Tenzvah, that can be valid because the Arab is in Rosh Hashanah and you're Rosh Hashanah. What do you mean? Yochel and Taisai. You could tilt the closet, then in the closet is within the airspace of Tenzvah, and then you could. So then why isn't that a valid Arab based on Rabbi Yirmiya's principle? So the Gemara gives two answers. I'm Rabbi Yirmiya. He says, Hacha ben Migdal Mesumer Eskin. He would talk about a closet that's knocked into the wall with nails. So you can't move it. Very good answer. That's it. It just can't be moved. Rav Amin gives a different answer. He says, no, I thought of a migdal she'in the summer. No, we could even be talking about uh, a closet that's not nailed into the wall. So wait a second. So how do you He says, no, here he has a more of a mathematical answer. He says, b'migdal arachaskin. He says, we're talking about a, a, a very t- long closet, which is taller than, t- than four amts. The imam tile purta, if you're going to be tilting the closet a little bit until you can move it, that it's in the airspace of ten tvachim, azul chutz la arba amas. Now the top is going beyond dalad amas from the place where the closet originally was. Now there's a lot of lumdus being said in these ideas, exactly, Taisa's Rashi, how to exactly explain it. We'll just say it simply. When, when you're taking from the wall, and you're moving the tower to where your air was, it comes out that now you're beyond Dalad Amas of where you intended to make your Shvisa. Rashi has two interpretations. One is that you're, not, you're no more anymore. Well, your your, your Mokah Shvisa was over here. Now that you move the tower to be within Tent Vachem, you're beyond Dalad Amas of where you intended to be. Now you're not in the same place as the air. Or another interpretation Rashi brings is that you can't go ahead and take it anymore from the top of the tower because it comes out that you're being married to Allah, Mr. Shasa Rabbim. In other words, you can't say two hoyles. It's a different interpretation, but the main idea is, is that you're already beyond, if you're going to tilt it inside, you're beyond Dalai Ramas, and therefore, it, there's not a viable option to say, help you because now you just moved yourself more than Dalai Ramas from where you're trying to be your heir, and therefore that's not going to work. So that's the Gemara's answer, either that we're talking about it's nailed in, or if you can't be Yilm Taisa, because that would cause a different problem that you'd be Chutzal Dalai Ramas of where your Mokim Shviz is. But then the Gemara has one more. What? Well, 
It's just a sort of like we said, we, we compared it to Erev Tchumen, like for example, right? So that's not, it's, so we're saying anytime you have your Erev, so here the Yochum and Tais says, yeah, is moving the baskets of the getting the Erev, so. The whole idea is that she's in the same place, but also the moon. She's not, I understand that's what I was saying earlier about Lamas, but how can you compare the area of moving the basket with the area of the sun, to actually moving yourself, moving the whole bodies? But I, mean, I hear what you're saying. You're saying one is on the air, one is on the person. At the same time, it's 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 um it's huve ruve b'mokam echad. We're essentially talking about this virtual halacha that you have to be in the same area as your air. So yeah, one's moving the air, one's moving yourself. But at the same time, like we could have huve ruve b'mokam echad. I mean, the whole vayil is virtual. Since so we said that we have these virtual laws that we have regarding air truman that were more lenient. We don't say rishus yachad regarding laws of Shabbos. But since you could move it, so then we should consider as if we're in the same area. So if I can move the, the migdal, and then I could be, again, the, the, what you're touching upon is discussing, you're showing them exactly what is the problem. Am I, am I, am I not where my makam shvis is? But yeah, I'm on the top of the tower, and I'm, I'm, I am going to be the, there. There's a lot of discussion. But the point is, is that technically I should be able to say I am in the same place as the air, because something could move. And so I could move, technically we're in the same area. And that's the thing about saying that no, because even if I would move this, I'm already beyond my Dalai Lama. But that's definitely a good question, as this is in the lumbus of the Sugya, that's all beneath the surface. So the Gemara has one more technical question. It says, wait a second, what's the case talking about? And it's an interesting, interesting question the Gemara is asking. If there's a window and there's a rope, meaning if there's a window in the closet, opposite the place where the Erev is, and there's a small rope in his hand, which is tied on the air from before Shabbos, then even if the air is in Rosh Hashanah, because we said it's in the wall, beneath Tent Fachim, and the other uh, end is in the tower, so then, then he should bring it with the, through the window and the rope. In other words, he should bring it to himself, because since it's what's called Agud Biyadah, it's, it's tied onto his hand, so it's only rabbinically forbidden when you're bringing from Rosh Hashanah to Rosh Hashanah, as the Mishnah teaches in in, in Masech Shabbat, Paragamites, it's film, that if let's say someone's reading some uh, a sefer on the top of a roof, but, and the, the Beneskagla sefer miyade, and, and the scroll rolls out of his hand. So even on the ground itself, he could really roll it to himself, because it's only rabbinically forbidden, and since it's Kisver Kodesh, so we don't make it forbidden. So one thing we see is that when it's attached to him, one end of it, it's only rabbinically forbidden to go ahead and bring it to where you are. Which is Rashi explains the Gemara's question going according to Rebbe, who holds we weren't glazer shvus bein hashmashes. So even in this case where the tower is above ten tefachim and that's where he's making a shvisa, and the air is beneath ten tefachim, but if there's a window and he has a rope, so then he should be able to go ahead and t- attach it to the air and then pull it to him. So it's, it, even though it's Rosh Hashanah and Rosh Hashanah, it's still not going to be a problem because it's Agud B'yadai. So then it's only rabbinically forbidden. So the Gemara says, you're right, that the less they have some asana. If there is no window and there's no rope. Why is there a window? Because the rope all the way over? Right, so it's actually different between the two different days of Rashi, but it's, I, I think it's access. But yeah, that, that's the main idea is that it's Agud. It's Agud B'yadai and that you could uh, bring it from, from where it is. But ultimately, uh, to hear without the wind and the rope, it's going to be taken from Rishus Yachid, from Rishus Ram to Rishus Yachid, and there's going to be a problem even by Ben So that concludes the Gemara's previous discussion regarding the halacha of putting the Arab Be'ila. Now we continue the halacha of the Mishnah that said that Nasn Babar. He said, oh, we talk about two halachas in our previous Mishnah. We spoke about putting in the tree, the Malamid, the Matmid, and we spoke about Nasn Babar if you put in a pit. Now the Mishnah says, I feel like may I'm a whole evening, there's a hundred Amid deep, it's going to be a valid act. So the Gemara discusses, hi, Bar. This pit, the koi hecha, where, in what vicinity is this pit? If the perimeter, if the area around is a private domain, obviously, Rishos Yachad goes all the way up until the sky. Just like we know Rishos Yachad goes up all the way to the sky. So you're playing ball in your backyard, you have to throw up the ball, who knows how high it goes up to Rishos Yachad all the way high. Same thing as going downwards. So what's a fillo? A, a pit that's ten tefachim deep is Rosh Hashanah. It is no matter how deep it is. So, so what's the halach? So the Gemara says you're right. Obviously, it's not the case of our Mishnah. But the koy b'shas So what are you going to say? The area around is actually the public domain. So the Gemara says, wait a second. So where is he intending to make his shvisa? Ilamala, if he's intending to be outside on the street. So to the contrary, why? He's in one place with Rosh Hashanah. And this area is in another place with Rosh Hashanah. It should not be valid. 
And Ilamatan, if he's on the bottom, he's actually making his shvisa in the pit itself. Shiti, back to the question. Obviously, who would have a He's in the same place as the Arab. What would be the Chiddush? So the Gemara says, Light Tzricha, no, it's necessary. The case of our mission is the Kaim. We're talking about where the pit is Bekarmas. It's in the Karmas, which is a rabbinically forbidden area, which is like an open field, which are Sabbaths, which the pit is in Rishisa Yachin, but the edge, which is the field, which is not in close to residential purposes, is a Karmas. And the Skab and the Lamala, and he tended to make his Shvisa on the top, on the outside, in the Karmas. Rebbe and our mission is like Rebbe. Dama that he says called Dabba Shem Mishum Mishum. Anything is rabbinically forbidden. Which is rabbinically forbidden to carry your Arab from Mishum Zeruch to the Kamalus is like us. Rabbi Nishmashes. We're not carrying Rabbi Nishmashes, and therefore that's when your Arab is acquired for you. And therefore it's going to be valid Arab, no matter how deep it is, because it's from a Mishum Zeruch to a Kamalus. Yeah, I'm just has to be able to get it. Oh, I mean, that's, I mean technically, I mean to be able to climb in. You are saying? Right. Yeah, I'm saying halachically. They were saying that it's not a problem because. Right. Yeah, that will learn. Comment, yeah, know. that will learn a later mission if you technically can't get. To, I mean, but yeah, you, you could technically get to a pit and climb down. So we continue with that the next mission regarding the uh, validity of a place of where you're putting the erev. Let's number Let's see, you put the erev on top of a reed. Oyber shakon this or top of a pole. So it says the mission like this: Bismachu talish v'noots. If the reed was first attached and then stuck into the ground, meaning it's not attached, it's not mechuber lekarka. And the Gemara is going to ask, wait a second, the Reisha, we just said before from the previous Mishnah, that is Rabbi, who says, you're not geyser on things that are mechubber, and it seems like from our Mishnah, that actually it's a problem if it's mechubber, if it's still growing attached to the ground. But be that as I mean, the Mishnah says, if you detach it and you suck it to the ground, even if it's 100 amas high, and the reason for this is because since it's on the bottom, is not four tefachim in its width, so it's not a Rosh Hashanah. So... Although, uh, although on the on the on the top it is four tefachim wide, but the, and the reason why it's four tefachim on the top wide because we said in the previous stuff you have to have <coughs> a mukim dal it has to be a significant area the top has to be but since at the bottom it's not four tefachim wide so it's not a rishus yoch it's hard so it's going to be a valid air. So the gemara says it, it addresses the question that we just said before. Rami le ravad ba masal rabbi says talish beno its end sounds like okay that if you had detached it and then you stuck it back into the ground, that's where, yes, that's what's going to be a valid air. But like Talish of no, it's, but if, let's say, you did not go ahead and tear it out and put it back into the ground, then like, then if it's attached to the ground, it's not going to be a valid air. Because if you're going to want to take the air, you're going to be using a tree, which is what a reed is, something that grows from the ground. Man, who's the Mishnah like? Seems like Rabbani, it's going like Rabbani. Dami, that they say, called Dabr Shum Shum Shvoz, anything that's been linked forbidden, which is utilizing a tree, goes Lobe Nishmash, they make Zerbe Nishmashes. Says the Gemara, wait a second. How could you say that? You just said the previous Mishnah, which was the Allah of a tree above ten Tvachim. That the Allah is going to be like Rebbe, or even like the Allah of the pit was the same Allah. You said that putting in the pit, it's in the Karmelis, and it's going to be valid Arab because it's only rabbinically forbidden. And you said, therefore, it's going to be valid because Rebbe holds the girls of the Mishnah. And it's a Rashi Rebbe, the Sefer Rabbanan. Now, this next Mishnah, which is like the Sefer of the previous Mishnah, you're saying it's going like Rabbanan because you're saying that. If it's attached, it's forbidden, which is like Drabanan. That's not like the previous Mishnah. So Amalei said to him, Rami Lee, Rami Bar Chamel, Rav Chizda. Rami Bar Chizda already asked this question, Rav Chizda. Rishon, he answered him, he said, Yes, Reish Rebbe, the Savior Rabbanan. The previous Mishnah is like Rabbi, and this Mishnah is like Rabbanan regarding this exact halacha about utilizing a tree about Isra Rabbanan by Ben Hashemashis. That's one approach. But on that, the Gemara says, Rabbi Nami says, No, Kulu Rabbi. No, all the Mishnah is over here, all going like Rabbi. So then why, how do we understand our Mishnah? Then why is it forbidden if the reed is still attached to the ground? Oh, but say for uh, this halacha of the reed is gezer shem It's a concern because you might break it. Meaning, a reed is different than a tree. A reed is very soft. There you can make a decree that maybe you're going to break it when you take the air. But a tree, which is very hard, is to be concerned. Why can't you go on a tree? The reason for a tree is really allowed to go on a tree on Shabbos. It's maybe you're going to go up and you're going to forget yourself and you're going to tear off a branch. But that's, you're going to have to actually break off a branch. But in contrast, by breaking of a reed, it's almost, def, it's almost definite. It's very soft. And you're going to try to climb up on the reed and take off the air. It's going to break. So it's not like an Isidra Banan. It's almost like a definite Isidra Rais of Kaitzer. So that's why by the case of the reed, if it wasn't attached, it's a problem because you're going to be doing Kaitzer. Here by the tree, it's maybe you're going to go and you're going to take and you break. So that's what goes a little bit in the In contrast of here, you're almost definitely doing this to the Raisa. So there even Rebbe would agree that that would be forbidden and therefore you have to have it first attached and then attached back into the ground. Now I think we'll bring the following story. 
hopeful Musa, that, that's going to relate back to this halacha, make mo, one more qualification. This, uh, the soldiers of the army, the Asul and Arda, they came to the to Narda and they took up space. And it was very tight for the Tamidim, who, because of these soldiers, take up all the, all the open spaces. So Omer of Nachman, and Nachman said to them, Puku, go out, Avidu Kabushi Kavshi Ba'agma. Go out and, you know, in the marsh, in the area where they had, there was reeds over there. So bend over the reeds, one on top of the other, to make it like chairs, so that you guys could sit on it. Well, the Machra Nezel Nezel Levan Shabbos, tomorrow, there's no more chairs, because the, the soldiers took over the base measures. So go out to the field, and all these reeds, bend them over, so like you'll use them as chairs. And that, the Gemara says, Eis vei rame bar chamal rab nachman, yes, rab nachman, the sum says, rab ufa bar abal rab nachman, says, wait a second, how could you say you should bend over the reeds, and then what you sit on Shabbos, we learned in our Mishnah regarding reeds, talish v'na'ut, we said only with detached, and stuck back in, in, yes, then when you can put your Erev on top of it. Loi talish v'loi, no, it's loi, we said if it wasn't detached, and then stuck back into the ground, then no. Obviously we see that reeds are like a tree, and you're not allowed to utilize it on Shabbos. So how can you say to like bend over the reeds and sit on it? So Malay said to him, Hasim over there in the mission that it's forbidden is Bu'izradim. So it's actually interesting, just like somewhere in the middle. We said that it's softer, the reeds are softer than trees and therefore it's problematic to use it, but it's still included in the Xero of the trees. There in the Mishnah was, at least they got a little bit hard, those reeds. So they're like trees. When did, Rav Nachman says, when did I permit the students to go to the marsh and bend over the reeds? Are when they're not as rough, when the reeds are very, very soft. Then they're actually qualified in halacha like yarek, like vegetables. <coughs> By Yerakis, the Chacham never made the gzera of Isr of using of a tree. And therefore, so it's somewhere in the middle. Now, the case of our Mishnah was hard enough to be Asr in the Isr of Elon, but it wasn't as hard as a tree. So Rebbe, although he lets you use a tree for Bein Hashem Ashris, but he doesn't let you use a Yerik, he doesn't let you use a, 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 a reed, because the reed is almost definitely going to break. At the same time, if it's very soft, Rebbe Nachman said, go ahead, you guys can bend it over and sit in it, because that was never included in the Gzeiro, the Rabbanon, of using an Elon. And therefore, that's not going to be a problem. But, what? Not on Shabbos. No, on Shabbos, because it's a Yerik. And we're not, it's not that, it, maybe it's not going to break, maybe it's because it's not as brittle, but the point is it doesn't have the Isser of the Elon, you know, use a tree. So forget about breaking, you know, use a tree. So it says, don't worry about that, because that's not including the Isser of Elon, because it's not included as Elon, it's, it's, it's very soft, so it's like your rockets. And your rockets wasn't including the Isser of the Rabbanon of the Isser of using a tree. Well, you Which one? On Shabbos? No, before that. What did, what did they do? That they bent it over? Yeah. He was just saying to make it like, like usable, like you, could, like you could sit on it. But then the Gemara is asking, wait a second, but it's the Isra of Elon, Bechlau. If you have a t- hard trunk of a tree, now sit on it because it's a tree, and I'll use a tree even if nothing's going to break. So here also, even if it's not going to break, because it's very supple or whatever, who gives? It's an Elon. Like you see in the Allah of it says no. Then it was, it was harder. It was what's called Uzradin. Uzradin is like an Elon. Then the reeds are like a tree, and then you can't use it. But here it's so soft, it's not a problem. And he says, and He says, and where do I get this idea that there's such a difference in Allah between Uzradin, which is that it made it a little bit hard, and when it's not so hard. You're trying to learn the Bryce in, un- in a different context, in the relo- regarding to the laws of Klein. Time you learn the Bryce, Akonin, the reeds, Batodin, Bahogin, these are all types of thorn bushes. So, Min Ilan he says the Bryce is considered a type of a tree, and therefore the Inan Klein Bekar. It's not considered a problem in the vineyard, you're allowed to plant other trees, you're just not allowed to plant other grains or vegetables. Now the problem is, we're tiny to another bright that says I call them the, the reeds of a kidon, which is a type of a, a fragrant spice, which is called kidon, the urvanan, which is a type of a willow, minyarakin, they're a type of vegetable, the hinklein bekerim, and therefore it is a problem about planting in a vineyard. Wait a second, kasha you have a contradiction. On the one hand, one bright is saying the konim are in Elon, and the other one saying the konim reeds are yarim. Ah, the Shema Menah, rather, obviously, Khan Buzradin, when the, when the reeds got hard, then they're like a tree. Then, that's where it's not going to be a problem in the vineyard. Khan B'Sha'in Buzradin, here we're talking about when it's not hard yet, then it's like a Yerik, then there is going to be a problem in the vineyard. Shema Menah, obviously we see there's a difference in the reeds themselves between Uzradin and She'in Uzradin. Now, parenthetically, the Gemara asks a question, once we introduce the Brisa, you said in one of the Brises that Vekida Min Yeriku. A kida is a type of a vegetable. On that, the Gemara asks on that, what time we learn the Mishnah set this client. It says, Imar Kivan Pegum, you know, a graft, a uh, Pegum, which is a type of a yerik, a vegetable, 
on gabe kida levana on this white kida nishu yerek beilon. You're not gonna graft a, a, a vegetable onto a, this, grafting is a problem with trees. So but one thing is we see this pagum which is a vegetable. You're not gonna graft it onto kida because you tell me kida is a tree. Didn't you tell me kida is a yerek? That my puppy says no kida lechud. There's two different types of things. One thing is called kida. That's a yerek. The kida levana lechud, and the other Bryce is mentioning kida levana, white kida. That's something else. Although the name seems to be the same thing, it's very, it's this, it's different in con, in the in definition. Kida levana is a tree, and that's going to be a problem about grafting. But those are two different things. Now we continue the halacha. The next mission continuing around this theme about where you're putting your air. Is that going to be a valid air? This is the mission of nusnu b'mikdom. You put the air in the closet. Ravin maftach, and you forget the key. Where's the key? No one knows where the key is. What's the halacha? So Tanakhama says, how is air? It's going to be a valid air. And the Gemara is going to explain why that is. And we're talking about where the closet is of Rishus HaYachet, where if there would be a key, meaning it's in a house, where if there would be a key, it wouldn't be any problem because he's in the same area as, as his as his Eru. But we're talking about that there's no key. So you, that's what someone asked before, that you have to be able to get into the pit. Like you have to be able to access it. No one has the key. Still the Tanakhama says it's going to be a valid air. Now, I mean, he says, and the Gemara is going to explain what exactly is he saying. He says, if any he says, if he doesn't know that the key's in its place, meaning essentially if you don't know where the key is, then any air is not going to be valid air. So the Gemara explains regarding the halacha the time to come. What? Kiva's laws before that. Kiva's laws before that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, 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 it's all dependent on, on Ben Hashemosh. So the Gemara says, Bamai, how do we understand the Allah of the Tanakam? Although the closet is in his house, it's both in Rishas Yachim, but since he can't take it, it's like two different places. He's in one place, and the Ebbs is in, is in another place. So how is this working? How is it going to be about Ebb? So that says the Gemara, Rabbi Shmuel Dametabai, they both say, Here we're talking about that the closet is made out of bricks, which is very easy to take apart. As Igmar is going to actually explain, we talk about where the bricks are just placed one on top of the other without cement between them, where there's no problem about stira, about demolishing something on Shabbos. Vermeer, he's going like Vermeer. The moment that he says, Yeah, you're allowed to actually take apart that closet, and then you can take the air. So it's not like, the Mishnah says, it's Beya. The Mishnah there is on the Lama Alva, the Beya. The Mishnah says, If you have a house that's full of produce, but sasi, it's, it's sealed off, but then the Nivchas, then by itself, it just, it broke apart. So even if it happened on Yom Kid itself, says the Tanakam, you'll take from where the, the part of the building collapsed, and it's and essentially the Chiddush of Allah is, there's no problem about Muktza, where that's an anonymous mission like Rib Shimon, who doesn't hold up the extreme definition of Muktza, where although technically it was out of sight, out of mind, because it was locked, sealed off, you couldn't get it, it doesn't make a difference. If somehow the building collapsed part of it, and you could get into there, you could take it. Rebbeim, he takes it one step further. He says, actually, you could actually go ahead and take apart some of the bricks of the building to get the food on Yom Tov. Gemara is going to shortly explain, Ba'avir the living, we're talking about where there's just, it, it's without cement, one brick on top of the other, where it's not considered steerous oil, not demolishing an oil on that day. Now, that's, so that's what Amish is talking about. The closet that you lost the key are just a bunch of bricks. So you could take away... Oh, oh, so we'll see that. Um, but first we have to see why it is good and why it's not good. What's the understanding of this Allah? But it's just bricks. You can take apart the bricks and you can access the air. Says Gemara, wait a second, wait a second. You're comparing this Allah of Remeir, you're saying he's the Allah of the Talikama, but Bamar of Nachman bar Adam Shmuel, he says it's not, it's not every case the Remeir says you can take apart a closet. It's by Vir the living. We're talking about where the bricks are without cement and it's one on top of the other. Who said any closet you could just take it apart? Generally, closet would be a problem about steer, about demolishing something. Oh, says the Gemara, the Gemara, the Gemara, that's what I'm talking about. Our Mishnah will explain the Migdal, the closet, the tower, is also with just bricks one on top of the other, with ear space. And that the Gemara says, wait a second, there's still one more qualification. But Gemara, the Gemara, the Gemara, the said, regarding that Mishnah, the Gemara, that the Mayor only said, the Yomtev, because Simchas Yomtev, so then they let you go ahead and take apart the bricks. I believe it's Shabbos, this was not permitted, as we'll see him on Shabbos. So, well, we're talking about here on Shabbos. Here the Arab that you're making, that Tchumen applies on Yamtiv too. You can't just walk wherever you want to. The Yamtiv is in Mishan. But to my Yamtiv. So you're right. We're talking about Vir living and then Yamtiv. Says, if that's the case, so wait a second. As someone just asked before, Haim Dik Tani Allah. So this that we learned on this. So that was the time to come. Then in the Mishnah, Rebbe Liazoim, he said the following words. He said, In Be'ir Avad, he said, if you lost the key in the city, 
This is a brisa. Meaning, this Reblez in the Mishnah will explain it according to what Rashi does. Reblez in the Mishnah says one thing. He says, we don't know where the key is, not Eir. In the brisa, Reblez says, regarding this Allah in the Mishnah, Reblez comments like this. He says, in the Eir, if you lost the key in the city, it will be Eir. It's going to be a valid Eir. Why? Because if you're going to find the key, which as the Taisis, Taisis Rush, they explain that if you could find it, technically it's like Benish Mush, it's like as if it would be found. So you would be able to bring the key. Why? Because you could bring it, like Rav Shimon says, as we'll shortly explain, what's called Der Chatzer Gagas and Kafibas. According to Rav Shimon, the whole city, besides people's houses, you could carry from one to the other. It's all considered one domain. So if you lost the key, some in the city, you could take it from a courtyard to a roof to a karfaf, which is an enclosed area, but not for residential purposes. So technically, you'll be able to get it back. So therefore, if you lost it in the city, it's going to be valid air. In the Sada, if you lost the key in the field, then in the Ruvay, it's not going to be a valid air. Because even if you would find the key, you wouldn't be able to bring it, because that's in a Carmelis, and you wouldn't be able to bring it from, from there. So Rashi explains there's three different opinions regarding the Allah of Mishnah. Korn Tanakama, which is really like Rameir, whether you lost the key in the city, whether in the field, it doesn't make it, it's going to be a valid air, because you don't need the key. You can take apart the, the closet. Because I've the living or to my According to the of the Mishnah, whether you lost the key in the city or in the field, it's not going to be valid there because you cannot take it apart because it doesn't hold like Reb Meir. And you also cannot bring the key because Reb Lezen, the Mishnah, does not hold like Reb Shimon that Gagas, Chatzes, and Kavivas are considered one Rishos. And then you have Reb Lezen, the Brysa, who heals like Reb Shimon. So it depends where you lost the key. If you lost the key in the city, then it's going to be valid because you could bring it. If you lost it in the field, it's not going to be valid. Or Rashi says, no, you could say Reb Lezen, the Mishnah, is only told in the field and he's the same Reb Lezen as the Brysa. Therefore, if Lesson the Mishnah said, if you don't have the key, you can't bring it because it's, in the, it's not going to be out there because it's in, the, it's in the field. And even if you found it, you wouldn't be able to bring it anyway. That's how Rashi explains what the Brysa is telling us regarding the Allah of the Mishnah. But one thing the Gemara is asking, this is the point of the Gemara's question. You just told me that how do you understand the Talmud Kama? Because it's based on the mayor, where you could take apart the closet, and, and that could only be with Avir the Livni, where it's just without cement, the brick. And that only of the Lord on Yamtib. So then Mali and Mali saw that. How do we understand the Lord in the Brisa? Who cares if you lost your key in the city or you lost it in the field? Haitsa, carrying on Yamtib for a Yamtib purpose is permitted. So who cares where you lost the key? It's Yamtib, it's not Shabbos. So what are you telling me? It makes a difference where you lost the key. So that's the Gemara and Tabalam Hamad Al, because Sir Max Rahim This could make your head something spin a little bit. But you have to help up. This word's missing, and this is what the words are going to be saying, and then you'll understand what Rebbe is saying. Nas nebemikum. You put your, your, your erev in the closet. V'nal b'fanav, and you locked it. V'avadam avtech. You lost the key. So the halacha is, the Tanakh of the Mishnah said, Hariza erev, it's midal erev. And it's supposed to say, B'med Roman, when did we say this? It's b'yamt, it's on yamt. Because like we said, really, this opinion of Tanakh is based on Rameir, and the Mishnah says it's Bayam with Avir Delivni, and it's a Yamtus so of a Hechsher Echel Nefesh, we let you go ahead and take apart the brick. Al Bashabas, in the Ruva Erev, Achabas Nakri in Erev, because the Rabbana did not permit you to take apart the closet. Nimtza HaMafteach, let's say you found the key on Shabbos, so Bain Be'ir, Bain Basada, whether it's in, in the city or in the field, in the Ruva Erev, the Tanakhan would tell you, now we, we just shifted, now we went to Shabbos now. We were talking about Yom Tov. And that's Allah of the Tani Kam and the Mishnah. Talking about Yom Tov. We just chasur mech, sur bachi tani. We just shifted now to Shabbos. Tani Kam does not hold like a Bishnah. And therefore, whether you lost it in the field or in the city, you cannot, it's not going to be valid there. Because you cannot carry it. We don't let you take apart the closet on Shabbos. And you can't bring the key according to Tani Kam. That's on that of Yezul Eimer. He was saying, oh, wait a second. But here, if you lost the key in the city, a Ruva Eirev is going to be a valid Eirev. The Sada in the field ain't the Ruby Abbas Amidal Erev, as Yimar explains. But here in the city, a Ruby Abbas Amidal Erev, Kirib Shimon. The Amma that he says, Echad Gagas, where the roofs, Echad Katsayas and Cortes, Echad Kafifas, or enclosed areas, that all those places, Rishos Achas, and the Kim Rishos Achas, and the Kim Rishos Achas, one domain on Shabbos for things that start off Shabbos over there. And since the keys start off over there, it's considered one domain. So you'd be able to carry it. The Sada in the field ain't the Ruby Abbas Amidal Erev, Kirabana. Now, there's actually a big discussion to show which Rabbanan is this. Ben Hanan over here brings that it's talking about the Rabbanan of Reb Shimon. There's a Gemara later on of Tzadik Hay said says that when you find film in the field, so what you could do is you give it to your friend, he gives it to him, and he gives it to him until you get to the outermost courtyard. Now that's what we're saying. It's not like that Reb Shimon, rather going like the Rabbanan that they say even for a mitzvah purpose like a film, or here in the case of Erev, that you wouldn't be able to go ahead and carry it carrying, passing from one person to another person, or let's say going less than Dalai at a time. And therefore, if it's in the field, there's no way of bringing the key back home. 
or some Mepharshim explain, or some Rishayim explains, going like the Rabbanon of Rebbe. That Rebbe says that there's a Issa Shvus by, it's going to be permitted on Shabbos, Bevenesh Mashas. There's going like the Rabbanon of Rebbe that say, no, since it's, it's in the Sud, it's in the Carmelists, that's going to be forbidden to go ahead and bring on Shabbos. It's going like the Rabbanon of that of Rebbe, which therefore you can't access this, because even though it's Benesh Mashas, Benesh Mashas, we're going like the Rabbanon, the whole that's going to be forbidden. But again, that's the explanation of Rebbe Leezer, why it depended if you lose it in the city or in the field, because now we just shifted to Shabbos, which the Tanakam actually is more chumr than that, says <coughs> either way you would not be able to, and then Rebbe Leezer says depends, depends where, because he's going to be going like Rebbe Shimon, which would say that the old one area, maybe you'd be able to bring it on Shabbos. Some of this we discussed in today's Daf and Erev and the Flamad Dalim, was we continued from the previous Gemara's discussion of Rebbe Yirmiya, and the Gemara was asking a question. He came up with this svara of Hayo, that since you could go ahead and bend it, which was the case of the basket that above 10th Fachim, we said Kalkala is going to be better than regular tree because you could bend it, you could bring it with from 10th Fachim. So the Gemara asked from a Brisa that had two halachas. The halachas were not even so important in the sense of what we were bringing it for, but as we do, we always bring the whole Brisa oftentimes. So he said, if let's say you intended to have your Shlis and Rosh and you put your Erev in the wall, so then if it's with, if it's with 10th Fachim, it's going to be valid because you're both in Rosh it is above 10th Vachim, it's not going to be Erev, because that's Rosh Hashanah and you're in Rosh Hashanah so therefore it's not going to be valid. But let's say the opposite, let's say you intend to make your Shvisa on the top of the tower. You're now on the top. So, okay, if the Erev is on the wall right next to the tower above 10th Vachim, be valid Erev, because you're both in the same area. If you put it now actually lower than 10th Vachim, actually now it's not going to be an Erev, because you're in Rosh Hashanah and it's in Rosh Hashanah. Now, the problem was, wait a second, why don't we say, Chayel B'yachal and Taisai, you could bend the tower, you could bend the closet, the dove cut, and bend it in with intent vachim. So the Gemara says, you're right. Either talking about where it's nailed in, you can't bend it. Or we're talking about a long one that's more than Dal and Amis. Problem is, if you're going to bend it now so that it gets within ten vachim, it's suddenly you just shifted more than Dal and Amis. You're more than Dal and Amis of the Mok and Shvisa. And then the Gemara also said, it must be told that there's no window and there's no rope, so you can't just somehow get the rope here and tie it onto where the Erev is. And then it will be only rabbinically forbidden. And we're going like Rabbi, which Shavisa is not a problem by Ben Hashmashas, because there is no window and there's no rope, and therefore it's going to be a problem because it's Isidai Raisa of taking from Rishos Hayachid, from Rishos Ram to Rishos Hayachid. Let me explain to all of the Mishnah that if you put in a pit, said even if it's 100 Amas deep, it's going to be valid as an air. So the Gemara says, wait a second, where is this pit in? If it's in an area, the perimeter is Rishos Hayachid, oh, obviously, because it's all Rishos Hayachid. If it's just a problem, to the contrary, and you're in the scoundrel initially is Lamala on the outside, and the Erev is in the pit, well, he's not in the same place as the Erev, because the Erev is in Rishos Ayach, and he's in Rishos Arab. Rather, he says, Toma, that it's, the pers- it's in the Karma, it's like a wide open field. And we're going like Rebbe, who, although it's rabbinically forbidden to take from Rishos Ayach from the pit to a Karma, which is rabbinically forbidden, but it's by Bein Hashmashas, and there we weren't Geyser, and therefore it's going to be a valid Erev. Then we went to the next Mishnah that we said that you put the Erev on top of a reed or top of a pole. So he said specifically it was detached and then stuck back into the ground, then it's going to be valid air. But if it's still attached, then it's going to be a problem. So the Gemara in the first approach wanted to say, hey, Rishul Rebbe, the Sefer Rabbanon, because the previous Mishnah we spoke about is like Rebbe. This Mishnah seems to be like Rabbanon, that there's a problem when it's attached, because like Rabbanon, because hey, it sounds like you can't use a, a tree which is rabbinically forbidden, the difference can be valid air. And the Gemara says, no, it, by a reed is different than the regular tree, because Shem Yiktim is more, uh, more of a concern because it's very soft. So therefore, it's, it's not almost like maybe you're gonna break with a branch. Yeah, that maybe weren't great in this much. It's almost definite that you're gonna be stepping on the branch, on the reed, and it's gonna crack. And therefore, even Rebbe would agree that that would be problematic and you can't use it if it's attached on, for, to use it even in this much for the air. Now, however, it is somewhere in the middle, but it is at least somewhat hard, like who's rubbing, <coughs> That therefore it is problematic at least for the zero of the of, of Elon, because if not, it would be like a Yerush, which that would not have the rabbinic prohibition about utilizing that thing because of a Yerush wasn't included in the Xeri of, 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 of using an Elon. And actually, as the Gemara shows the difference between the Zradin or not, as we say regarding reeds, regarding the halacha, if it became hard like a Zradin, regarding the laws of Klein, because then. If it got hard, it's like a tree. Regarding the Isser of Klein, which is a problem with Yerokis, uh, it, 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 it depends if it's going to be considered as an Elon or if it's going to be as a, as a Yerik. Because an Elon is not a problem in a, in, in a vineyard. A Yerik is. That's what he said. First of all, we had a story that he said that you're allowed to bend it over of Nachman 
but that's like the Yerik because it's very soft. And then we showed that a Zrodin is a difference if, in halacha, in the concept of Klayim, that if it got hard already, it's like an Elam, and therefore it's not a problem in the vineyard. If it's soft, then it's going to be like a Yerik, and therefore that's going to be a problem in the, in the vineyard. Then we went to the next Mishra, he said, if you put it in the closet, and you lost the key, what's the halacha? So the Tanakh says it's going to be about there. But well, as I said, the words that, oh, if you don't know that the key is over there, meaning essentially you don't have the key, it's not going to be about there. So regarding the Tanakh he says, why is it a Bel Air? Hoover is, is, is not in the same place because you can't access the, the air. So he said there's Tomat that it's a, the clause is made out of bricks, like a mayor, and there's two criteria. I read the living in the it's not cement, so there's no slice in. Additionally, it's a Yom where we allowed you to take it apart. Now, well, then what's Rebel Ezra saying? You know, why, why uh, first of all, Rebel Ezra in the Brysa and the Mishnah, meaning Rebel Ezra said that it depends if you lose it in the city or in, in the field, why would that make a difference? So the Gemara says you're at Chesur Mechsra, and it's Rebel Ezra actually going on Shabbos. That if you don't know where the key is, let's say the way Rashi explained that both Rebel Ezra are the same and you lost it in the field, then it's not going to be valid there, where yet, if it's in the city, it's going to be valid there because it's going like a Shimon, who holds the Gagas Chatzes for Kathifais are all considered one domain, should be able to bring it. Whereas the Tanakhama didn't hold like that. But if you lose in the field, then he holds it's not going to be in there because that's going like Rabbanan, which Rabbanan, either Rabbanan of Rebbe, who hold that you can't do Isid Rabbanan even by Benash Lasha, so therefore it's an out of the field, it's a Kamalist, you wouldn't be able to bring it to your house. Or it's going like Rabbanan of Ribshim, which we'll see in the later daf and that's how the A, which they, they he, Ribshim, says you can bring the throne less than Dalai at a time or to pass it to your friend. They don't hold like that, and therefore if the, if the key's out there, you're not going to be able to, even for a mitzvah, if it was like an air, you're not going to be able to bring it, and therefore in the field it's not going to be a valid air, because again that's going on Shabbos, whereas the first part of the time of before the Chesur Mitzvah was going on Yom Tov. Thank you for any time for hosting us.